Mikkel and Faye coming out in 2v2 up against Morton and Sam. Let's get to it. Kick off this amazing Saturday. Heading into game number one of our opening set. Very excited to see what these guys bring to the table. Morton and Sam up against Faye and Mikkel 04. It was interesting earlier this week, we uh, we saw the meta in 2v2 kind of shift again, not seeing any Royal Giant earlier in the week. We saw a lot of graveyard freeze, double graveyard freeze, and now today we're starting off with double Lava Hound. Lavas will meet at the middle with relatively similar support. As well as the MVP of 2v2, the Baby Dragon coming out for both teams. Lumberjack sneaks in, picked up by the Skeletons on the inside. Miner, decently timed, but placed in the unsafe position. Early King Tower activation for this 2v2 set. And the Lumberjack gets on the tower. Very, very nice exchange there for Fnatic, but they've got a lot to defend against. Lava comes down just in time to tank for that Princess Tower. I have to imagine that that Miner placement one tile low or one tile high from this perspective uh, had to be a misclick there. Yeah. You know, I really like seeing the Skeletons showing up in 2v2 a lot because there's so many other troops on the board that provide so much offensive and defensive capabilities that just using them as a distraction unit seems like a, a, a nice cheap replacement for the guards. Yeah, you, you save two Elixir. You know, I think people shy away from them because of the number of spells that are on the board all the time and the amount of splash that's been played. But not only that, but also if you need to get to a card quickly, if you need a cycle, you have an option that doesn't typically appear in 2v2. Yeah. And with that slower elixir draw, that cycle option might be really, really valuable. Yeah, very, very valuable. Inferno Tower comes down for Fnatic, providing great, great defensive prowess, if you will, over that Lava Hound. Lava Hound not making it across the river. Right? Well played, Lightning. I don't know if they have anything to pick up. Last second snowball. Very nice snowball. So SK Gaming currently with a slight lead of almost 200 HP as we move into double elixir time. Both teams deciding to now Lava up again. We got and now double. Yeah, double Lava coming down for Fnatic. Let's see what they have for this Inferno Tower. First one pops, second one goes straight for the tower though. Yeah, raged up, Lightning comes in. And the, the Mega Minion does not get in front of the Lava Hound, so Inferno Tower does take out the Lava Hound Poison takes out the pups, not very much after all that spent there for SK. A very, very nice poison by Fnatic. The mini P.E.K.K.A. coming across the river did not get the pickup on the miner. And there you see the skeletons doing their job. Both teams playing skeletons. I mean, pretty much almost an exact identical matchup so far. I'm trying yeah. to look at the, the construction. The only the major difference here is the Fnatic not playing the Dark Prince. Yeah, and that, the, uh, and that SK is not having the Lumberjack. Lumberjack doing a, a good amount of work for Fnatic. However, right now, this is a big, big uh-oh for Fnatic. You got the Miner on tower. The pups are getting tanked for. Snowball is in. That's going to do it. Wow. SK Gaming opens up with a bang and a fist bump. Looks like the battle of the double Lava Hounds goes to SK Gaming. At the very end there, you saw Faye and Mikkel play Lavas up high at the river. And SK kind of uh, doubled down on their defense and just sent in a miner to support the one Lava Hound. And I think that was the moment that the, the match shifted. It seems like that might have been an overcommitment. 14 Elixir plus support cards for a, for an offensive push that didn't pay off as much as it needed to for that value. Yeah, we've seen the uh, the double tank decks kind of struggle this year. You know, double Lava Hounds and double Golems, they, they just provide no defensive utility at all. And uh, it's, as you said, it's a lot of Elixir to be spent. Well, stacking them is one thing, a nice pickup there with the Skeletons on the Miner. Yep. Stacking them is one thing, but it seems like when they when, when you keep uh, uh, when you keep running them back and forth, you get a little bit better utility out of that than when you're just doing double at the same time. Yeah, rotating, alternating, whatever you want to call it, seems like a very, very good way to be playing those cards instead of putting 14 or 16 on the board <clears throat> at the same time. So this is an interesting deck here from Fnatic, Skelly Barrel Graveyard. Kind of a fun one-two punch. We'll see if that works out. Yeah, SK probably really, really hoping they have a poison in their deck either of their decks. And Princess comes out, a card that we've seen very, very little here at CRL. And Miner right to the Princess. Dark Prince comes in behind. 
But with that, Dark Goblin not going to get to tower. So good idea there from SK, but doesn't quite pay off. So we have a lot of log bait aspects here from Fnatic. You know, you've got the Dark Goblin, the Dark Prince charge, the Rascals, the Princess, the go uh, excuse me, the, the graveyard. So uh, kind of fun to see a log bait. Yeah, log bait is the only really central uh, meta deck archetype we haven't seen in 1v1 yet. Yeah, yeah, and it was so, so popular before. You gotta think with how strong Snowball and Barb Barrel are and how much Tornado is seen in decks, it just doesn't have the, uh, the oomph that it used to. That poison did not get one of the Rascal Girls, so she's able to do a lot of damage and help clean up that lava push. But look at this baby dragon. The splash damage is doing work on that lower left tower. So another Graveyard Skeleton Barrel push. Poison not in cycle to defend against this one. Yeah, that was a lot of damage on that left-hand tower. And now you see the Princess doing one of the most frustrating interactions in the game, which is just standing at the river and raining down arrows on your Princess Tower. So Miner to the back, turns the Baby Dragon opposite direction. We'll get some good damage here. You know, and if it wasn't for that last Baby Dragon that was splash damage, getting the splash damage onto that tower, Fnatic would be in a much more commanding lead. This time, Poison in, no, not in cycle. And that's going to be tower down, it looks like. Yeah, this should be it. Fnatic takes game two from SK. Maybe SK's just, just dropping a pile of spells, lightning in. Oh, the poison, will it get they enough They should picks? get there. There oh, it is. Oh, yep. there we go. We're heading to overtime. And now you got to think Fnatic has to take advantage of all the elixir that was just spent on a naked tower. And here they go all in on the right hand lane. Oh, man. That might that... be the most valuable NATO we have seen played this season. Ever. Yeah, that was incredible. Wow. Wow. SK Gaming, just by the skin of their teeth, go on into overtime and defend a, a total sellout push by Fnatic very, very well. While they're behind, they are still in this thing. And Fnatic is not relenting. They're going to keep going. Baby Dragon meets Baby Dragon at the river. Freeze comes in. They sat on that freeze so, so long, Andrew. And that might be a game changer at this stage. Yeah, we're at 591 HP. Now, they don't have enough spells to spell cycle in just one rotation. So they've got to play a little bit conservative here. SK choosing the Lava up. They have to get Lava Hound on the board if they're going to have any chance of getting back into this thing. And these guards end up, ooh, a nice snowball to protect that princess. Princess alive in the opposite lane. Miner comes down defensively. They did not take a, a lick of damage on that tower. And now they have two Lavas coming down. Defensive poison here will clean up a lot of that action. So SK kind of sells out on offense and doesn't get a whole lot, although now it's starting to pay off a bit, down to 1572. And that Princess hiding behind the King Tower for Fnatic was providing so much defensive utility there. Skellies are on the tower, and that is going to be enough to spell cycle them out. Fnatic here barely, barely slipping into overtime should be able to take this game. So Poison down, Miner to the back, onto the Dark Goblin. Lava out trying to get in, Snowball is down. Will it tick fast enough? The Freeze and comes in. there it is. There you go, 116 HP, separating Fnatic from a sweep or game number three. Game number three. So far, the action has been fast and Furious. Number yeah. nine at this point, it's an entire franchise. <laughs> Starring Morton, OP Sam, Fan, Mikel. I'd watch that. Morton and Sam obviously uh, all drive BMWs. I uh, I loved that graveyard log bait deck that was just played. That was a lot of fun. We haven't we haven't seen uh, a lot of a lot of small fast decks so far in two v two and. You know, the success there gives me some hope of maybe seeing, seeing a little shift coming. Yeah, but we are seeing right now a lot of similar things on the board. We got Baby Dragon and, of course, Giant Skeleton. Giant Skeleton usually paired with that Royal Giant. He was staying far enough behind to avoid that death damage, so the guard's actually working out in Fnatic's favor in that moment. Yeah, Ram Rider coming down for Fnatic should not be getting even close to the tower. Really nice use of log there to slow down that push in the right-hand lane. Mm -hmm. 
the log, sorry. I feel like I said University of Texas and not the University of Texas. <laughs> Little slowdown here from both squads, resetting. Trying to figure out how to break through. A great pickup with the guards there. So MK and Pekka for Fnatic. So two distinct but powerful defensive options. Kind of covering all their bases here. Yeah, I'm very curious to see how they uh, end up using those cards together. That bomb misses the Lumberjack, demanding a response. The Mega Knight might get one shot. There yes, it, it does. Nice poison value here. Yeah, both e is going to get taken out by the dastardly spell. Who cast the poison because of that weird, creepy laugh in the background? I do want to know. I think it's the king. It's got to be the king. Is the king that creepy? It's his evil side coming out. It's so when he shaves the beard into a goatee, then he <laughs> casts, the, <laughs> casts the poison. Miner not picked up, despite going to that number one spot or a couple tiles higher. Lightning takes care of the Inferno Tower, and that's a very healthy RG yeah. on the tower. And the Lumberjack goes down on defense. Oh. So that Lumberjack, which would have been so key to defending the right-hand lane, goes down. And now it's two Ewas is trying to hold off, but down to 1381, SK Gaming roars into the lead. Yeah, and that Raged Up Ewas did a great job. But as you said, Rich, a ton of damage already dealt on Fnatic's right-hand tower. And nothing to pick up this Lumberjack on the left-hand side either. It's Mega Minion does it a little bit, but down to 2134 on the left-hand side. Miner coming in to the safe spot of SK Gaming. Followed by the log, anticipating, trying to predict some sort of defensive response. Nothing comes in. Yeah, the guards or the skeletons have been used many times to pick that up. That log was a big miss, though. So Inferno Dragon, Inferno Tower, Lumberjack, Pekka, and Ewiz all tag team on that Royal Giant. Pekka not drawn in by the Inferno Tower, but cleaned up very easily. Ooh, and look at that, the double log, the bar barrel and the log come down. And it's the Ram Rider stun that really ends up being the MVP of that exchange. And that Dark Prince ooh, almost getting to tower, not quite great use of skeletons there by SK. SK is way behind on Elixir, and that was a moment in which they may have been able to be punished. I don't know if Fnatic realized the lead they had in that moment. Yeah, they are just so focused on defending this right-hand tower, and they are having such a hard time doing it. That's going to be some good giant skeleton bomb value. Fnatic really needs to figure out how to rotate their Ram Riders with their Inferno Tower to make sure that there are no more Royal Giant connections on that bottom right-hand tower. I do. I, it, it's more than they may be anticipated, but I'm, I'm not against that decision to just let the Mega Knight get on tower yeah. on the right-hand lane. SK was pretty low on defense. They are able to save the, the Elixir to pick up the Ram Rider on the left-hand side, and that was a fully healthy tower, so uh, a, a, a good but hard choice made there. Yeah, I mean, the worst-case scenario there is that Fnatic ends up taking a damage lead on the right-hand side and then has to play into the same lane as SK, and then SK doesn't have to split their damage or Elixir, focusing on defense on the opposite side. So here we have a fully healthy Pekka and Dark Prince. Dark Prince does not quite get the tower. Oh, no, it that does get Barb is getting tanked for by Skeletons. Yeah, that log had to come in. That was a ton of damage on that left-hand tower for Fnatic. SK Gaming just struggling to find enough Elixir to defend here. Oh, wow. And now Baby Dragon and Miner on the tower. That is a ton of damage. 523 HP. Uh, you got to imagine there's some big spells oh, in the hand here. Oh, no. Wow, Ram Lightning. Rider gets in. Lightning takes it. SK Gaming falls to Faye and Mikel 04 in our 2v2 set.